<laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. I I am so sorry. I I couldn't help myself. Hello, you Star vs. Fanatics, and it's finally the moment that many of you have been voting for. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be covering over the chapters of Reina the Riddled and Selena the Shy. And, um, uh, quite honestly, just by looking at how much text are in these chapters, specifically Reina's, I can somewhat attest as to why multiple people refuse to make a video overviewing the material. But with all introductions and gags out of the way, I believe you all have already waited quite enough. So, to start off with today's dissection video of the Book of Spells, we begin with Rhina the Riddled, also known as the daughter of the demon herself, Crescenta. But don't worry, Rhina doesn't seem too bad. I mean, just look at her cheek symbols. It could be a reference to Infinity War. The rhyme for her historical tapestry goes like this. Seven came before Rhina, if you were to subtract the boy. Add four more reigns to her domain, and then what gets destroyed. Now, what I find the most appalling about this description is the question mark at the end. Are they implying that something happens for princesses ahead of her time? Welp, let's try flipping ahead to see for ourselves. This, uh, <clears throat> this, this takes me some time. After finally flipping four princesses ahead, we are presented with Moon Butterfly, but what exactly was the message insinuating? Perhaps it's referring to the already broken down relationship between monsters and humans. It would make sense because the last time the monsters had ever been under this much hatred was when Solaria was killed in the middle of a war, much like Moon's mother Comet. Plus, let's all admit, the main focus of this show is indeed about the relationship between humans and monsters finally consolidating. All right, so to begin with her chapter, we are presented with a wand that is just as sophisticated as Riddles itself. Not only does it look like a Rubik's Cube, but according to Rhina herself, the wand must be rearranged before every single spell. And from what it seems, there are five different shapes her wand can make, and so there are five different mill horses needed to operate her wand as a whole. The only one familiar to us is Chastity, however the other four mill horses are new. As for the rest of the features of her wand, the middle section of her wand consists of a heart made of painite surrounded by an infinity symbol. And in addition to that, painite exists in our world, is exceptionally rare and incredibly expensive. The bottom of it, however, is very sharp and apparently is capable of piercing glass. And now moving on to the next page, welp. Here comes the reasoning behind as to why so many people skip doing videos on Rhina's chapter. Lo and behold, I present to you the nine paragraphs of doom aka the nine step stairway to riddle magic mastery. Step one is collect them like butterflies. Step two is what riddle are you? Step three is size does not matter. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Step four is answer me thus. Step five is proper drafting tools for success. Step six is metaphor this, metaphor that. Step seven is a little rationality. My dear, I don't give a rhyme. Step eight is riddles can be people too. And lastly, step nine is lend me an ear. Now, I for one will not be reading the entire stairway, but instead give you summaries of each step. One is discussing about how riddles can be conjured up simply by being observant to one's surroundings and it can be found almost everywhere. Two is about letting your imagination take control of your riddles and how it can define you. Three is basically what it sounds like. It simply doesn't matter how large the riddle is as long as it has some meaning to it. Four is about how you must know the answer to the riddle first before you can actually make up a riddle about the matter. Five is saying that the best tools for riddles is a Rubrikian cube, but mainly a pencil and paper will do just fine. Six talks about those attention grabbing metaphors. Seven discusses about the significance of using alliteration every now and then. Eight is about how riddles can be about human qualities, not necessarily about humans themselves. And lastly, Nine is about simply spreading the word about your wonderful riddle or riddles. Oh, and I haven't forgotten about the top of this page, including a paragraph talking about how much she despises a person by the name of Ronaldo. 
No, that's the wrong one. She goes on to describe him as a bald member of the Magic High Commission that hates riddles. It's strange to me because I haven't even heard of this character until this chapter with Rhina. I mean, she even went as far as trying to roast this guy here. Okay, she says, I am closest to a buzz. I am lonely without fuzz. Even a doll has a more luxuriant fall. What am I? And then she answers, this guy's hairline. <laughs> All right, now that's not precisely what it says in the book, but <laughs> you know where I'm getting at, people. However, not only is he mentioned out of the blue from what I can see, but he does look awfully similar to the same creature that worked for Ludo all the way back from season one. And suspiciously was the one who retired from the Magic High Commission after Rhina cursed him to speak in riddles only. I haven't found a shred of evidence regarding the character in Star vs. Season 1 speaking in rhymes, but at the same time, his dialogue tends to be limited after all. As for the rest of her chapter, she explains how she has a best friend by the name of Lady Guza, who I believe is half Mewman and half Owl. So waking her up at around 7am in the morning not only will make me cranky, but also her especially. Rhina also carries around a pet turtle by the name of Turtle Hopkins, who was found by Lady Guza in the cat face dimension. The darn thing sadly passes in its sleep pages later from what I'm guessing is approximately a few years later. The turtle was so classy that it was wearing a top hat and a mustache from day one. Some of her spells are quite tedious and just flat out useless in emergencies at times. I guess she gets that from her mother. Anyways, a perfect example is when she convinces the reader to use a spell that consists of you performing specific moves and then afterwards to solve a riddle. Like, what? <laughs> That's equivalent to back in the day when you had to dial 911 on the rotary phone in case of incidences. And then she has these other weird messages that correlate with it saying that if you perform the the spell faster, then yeah, you'll be able to get out of the situation faster. Of course, if you perform a defensive spell faster, you'll have a less likely chance of getting in danger. I don't mean to purposely roast her, but come on, there are just so many notes in this book she makes, and most are ridiculously hilarious. She even puts a message multiple times in her book stating to take off a red ribbon from off of her arm, and then she instantly forgets to take it out of her arm, pages later. But with all jokes aside, I am impressed with her stats quite honestly. She has a rating and strength of 14, which remind you is between star and moon butterflies. The rest is... Meh. The last remains of her chapter describes her unfortunate encounter with a demon man by the name of Lord John Rochley. He revealed to be in relationship with Tom's side of the family from what it says, as he is the second cousin of one of the Lucitors. Rhina did not truly want to be in a relationship, nor did she want to be queen, so she thought that the logical answer would be to cast a spell that forced her to love him. Alright, once again, it runs in the family, putting a spell upon yourself just so you can be able to feel a certain way. However, for just merely a page later, Later, we witnessed the results of an alarming breakup. I predict it to be some sort of an abusive relationship just by reading her riddle of him. I make up dumb limericks, I speak 20 dead languages, I pluck the monster gut strings of seven instruments. I'm tall, I'm a demon. And the statement that nails my point in the coffin? The answer. A cruel husband. Now thankfully the demons weren't as brutally revengeful as the Septarians for example, but at least we somewhat have a much better understanding as to why the Lucitors are accepted. And all that's nice, but uh, does that mean that Star and Tom's relationship was kinda incestuous? Nah. The chapter then concludes with her very last riddle. I am not the beginning because that is too soon. I am not in the middle like a dip down spoon. I am. And uh, well, well quite frankly I have absolutely no idea. Let me let me think about that. The answer is the end. And it's totally not because I just saw the answer to the left after 10 minutes of trying to legitimately figure it out for myself. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is the time to go in depth into the chapter of Selena. The shy, the one full of secrets behind the mask of her wand, the one with the many mysteries of the cosmos, the, the one that we've all been waiting for, the one that got the most reviews from the ratings that I made on the poll, you know, that poll I did on YouTube, yeah, that...
Yeah, you guys have been waiting for this, huh? And finally, guys, the time has come. The, the revealment of all those secrets left behind for so many years from, from the episode in Season 2 into the 1. We finally get the answers that we've all been waiting for, and now... We received nothing. I went back and forth through Selena the Shy's chapter and let me say that I was truly disappointed. So far, the only thing I was able to fester out of her entire chapter was the simple fact that they finally revealed what kind of cheek marks she has. And plus her tapestry reading. What lies behind the golden fan the hand does sweetly hold. A trove of cosmic secrets that never will be told. Whenever they say that about her tapestry reading, what exactly do they mean? What exactly are they referring to when they say cosmic secrets, exactly? According to her attributes, her wisdom is a level 14, while her shyness is a level 20, and her potion crafting is a skyrocketing 20. Now even though I was mildly disappointed after reading her chapter and there's not really too much to go with, I still want to read this one little quote that Star says on the left of her card. I started reading this chapter, but there weren't as many secrets as I thought there'd be. Wow, that, that sounds interesting. It's like she was trying to warn us from the beginning. Now, here's my theory. Here's my take on this entire situation. First of all, I'm just gonna spoil it right now. There's not really that much to read from her chapter though I will overview it anyways just for the sake of it for anyone who is still curious to know what's going on. But however, here is my theory on this. I really do feel as if those cheek marks were hidden from us in season two for a really great reason, for us to not theorize the one I'm about to say. Now let's just point out the obvious. She has moon cheek marks and it would just make sense for at least one of her granddaughters or at least one of her daughters to be named Moon, which is coincidentally the daughter, I mean, <laughs> Her granddaughter, Moon the Undaunted. And even though we are told within season 3 that technically Star, Moon, and the rest of her family are kind of fakes compared to Eclipse's side of things, I still believe deep down that they are connected in some way, if not related. Just the fact that their cheek marks do sound similar to each other and they just... I don't know. I mean, it, when you think about it, it all comes together in some sort of way. Star has heart, which kinda is part of the cards game, as well as Eclipse's spades, as well as one of the Johansson's family member stars resembles something to do with space. And I'm telling you right now, even though she seemed to have been an insignificant character, D Daharia the Heaped had a circle. And even though they said it was just resembling the fact that she can draw circles really nice, it most likely resembles a full moon. And just knowing the simple fact that we weren't given any stats whatsoever as to her card description, I, it makes me skeptical. And lastly, the thing that truly puts the icing on the cake for me is the fact that ever since Selena's reign, it seems like the intelligence and wisdom stats have risen ever since, including the intelligence and wisdom stats for one of her daughters, Estrella. Because let's be real, this girl was the drawing queen and she made a 17 intelligence and 17 wisdom on her stats on her card. Now obviously I'm not trying to say that they must know something about the family heritage or something about the cosmos of from the beginning of time of when even Glossaric was created. But maybe, just maybe, and I guarantee you, what was behind the wand the whole time had something to do with the past of Muni or at least something to do with their family heritage. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of my huge cluster of a theory. <laughs> So, um, let me just continue on with the rest of Selena's chapter and basically end the video. To begin her chapter, we've got the lovely wand herself, her literally dead millhorse ghost from Rhina, and her stats. Once again, holy crap, what a significant amount of skill she has for potion crafting. Her potions consist of potions that bring spirits into the real world, a candle that can support a friendship, ingredients in a bag that apparently resemble good luck, and an apple that has the person you have feelings for fall in love with you. And from what we can all take on this is the fact that she most likely did get her lover by using that potion. She not only assures you throughout the text that it works, but I mean, she does have a daughter after this named Estrella. Now, unlike her mother, she is more into solving riddles rather than making them herself. So examples are the Muni Tarot cards for what I'm guessing are possible clues to ancient Muni history. But that's for another video in case I find anything fishy. I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen, but this video has been long enough. It's been way past the like 
13 minute mark. But see, so I'm gonna study this book throughout the week while I'm on vacation and actually look at it a bit more to see if I can figure out any more clues as to what she's hiding behind her wand. Now I for one am very disappointed, but I bet you guys are kind of disappointed in me and this video itself, but I truly, I, I really do feel bad. I really wanted to make a video about Selena that was extremely revealing. It, it would have been so awesome if only they would have just revealed something. I honestly feel like it's gonna be something that they reveal in season four. But with all that being said, please, I really do hope and believe that you guys still enjoyed the video regardless of the fact that we weren't able to go in depth into, you know, Selena's history as much as I really wanted to. And once again, I'm truly sorry for this video being longer than expected. I really didn't wanna make it too long, but I ended up making it long because Rhina had a bunch of stuff in her chapter that I was not expecting. Anyways, as usual, this has been the next big thing. I hope you guys have subscribed if you haven't, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace!